Gaten, since the conference, we've had a few very interesting results in by-elections, uh, the Swellendam by-election in particular. Has that maybe given you or given the Patriotic Alliance more respect in the eyes of the DA? Because up to that point in that by-election, it was almost like, oh, well, they'll go back to 0.6% of the national vote uh, in the next election. However, after Swellendam, where you got more votes than the DA, and because you split the vote between you, the ANC actually won the ward. Do you think there was a little bit of a wake-up call, a bit of drinking some coffee after that? I think uh, the, 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 the DA has successfully kept away, and the mainstream media has aided and abetted them in keeping away the true rise of the PA. We laugh whenever we see the polls coming out, and they don't even mention us. They mention people like ACDP, respectfully. Uh, those parties are very small compared to the Patriotic Alliance. They mention people like Coke. Those parties are very small compared to the PA. Let's take El Rado Park before we come to the Western Cape. The PA won El Rado Park from the Democratic Alliance. El Rado Park is the second biggest color community. We won with a two-thirds majority. We beat the DA and ANC with a two-thirds majority. You don't get that in politics. We're not only in what uh, uh, 17, also in what 18. So in two wards in B. Then in Tokoza, which is ANC strongland, we have won the ward there. The PA has taken from the ANC a ward. Tokoza has got the history of the ANC and the tapestry runs a rich day in Tokoza. Uh, two weeks ago, we had the biggest uh, council of the ANC in the city of Joburg, Amelia Zama, joining the PA uh, councillor. Tomorrow, we have got a very big leader of the DA joining Patriotic Alliance uh, in the Western Cape. And when I spoke to him, uh, he has been so clear that, you know what, I don't understand my party. Work with the PA. I mean, can't you see these guys uh, coming for us? Western Cape, and this is something that I've been trying to drum to all my friends and say to them, no one is, the ANC is in trouble nationally. I don't listen to people that put the ANC above uh, 42% in, this, in, in South Africa. Listen. Then you don't understand the power of Zuma. You don't understand the power of ACE. No matter what, they lost the fight against Ramaphosa, but they didn't lose all the support. Didn't lose all the support. So, didn't lose all the support. Uh, so, when you go back to that by election so, in Swell No, no, I'm going to read now. Let's just. No, mm, in Swell and mm. what happened in Swell and could have. Uh, you look at Prince Albert. Action SA, not Action SA, Freedom Front Plus, and the DA club together in Prince Albert. And they beat us by 40%, 40 votes. Then we move over to Siedeberg. In Siedeberg and Matikama, let's start in Matikama. The DA beat us with Freedom Front Plus, the DA, and other local parties. And they forgot to thank Freedom Front Plus and Corney, then went out and said, the PA could have beaten you if... We didn't help you. At least have the decency to thank us. Then we go next door to Siedeberg. They beat us again with 40 odd votes, I think, in Siedeberg, together with three parties against the PA, standing alone. The ANC was in there. You had the uh, Freedom Front Plus, you had the DA, you had Siedeberg, Irta. They beat us with 40 votes. Then in Kensington, <laughs> they said they made a mistake. The DA is a very professional outfit, they didn't make a mistake. They realized it's Armageddon. They realized uh, there was a, a priest swelling down. The PA then beat the ANC good, and, and the DA, they, sorry, the DA and the ANC conveniently forgot to register in the history of the DA. It has never happened. Now we know the truth. And the people that's coming over from the DA is telling us, no, we were, we, we, we were told not to register for that thing. Now we've took that what? Then swelling down. 
Now, what you saw in Swell and Dam is what's going to happen in the Western Cape if the Moonshot Pact fails. Swell and Dam is the perfect example that where the DA and the PA fight over a bone, the ANZ will come and grab that bone. If, if the DA gets a uh, force to 25% or to 30%, and the PA gets 20%, 25% in the Western Cape, which, which we will get, and the, the ANC comes and they take uh, another 25% also. If there's no agreement between the DA and the ANC, the Western Cape will fall into the hands of the African National Congress. What I'm proposing, and that's my reason wanting to join the Moonshot Pact, if the DA is serious about this thing of the Moonshot Pact, let it show in supporting Mashaba's Action essays vote of no confidence. By failing to support that, they can go to hell. And we can go to hell. And, and Action essay can go to hell because we deserve to be in hell. Because we don't care about the voters. It's not, we would have loved SPA to be the one to put, have put the motion of no confidence. We would have loved that. That was part of our plan. That's why my tweets. But Masaba being the shult person that is, then when? So I can't now say, oh no, Masaba was the raw, I'm not going to support it because I didn't put it. And it's like walking away was your choice. I am saying when we were young, Alec, you know, we grew up poor. There was always one kid that wasn't as poor as we are, that had a soccer ball. But that kid was always the one with the least talent when it comes to football. But he had a soccer ball. So when we play, and you don't pass him the ball, he takes his ball and he leaves. We would even get to a stage where we will tell each other, hey, pass him, pass him, he's going to leave. And, and, and what I'm saying to you is that we don't want to display that type of behavior. We we thought we were going to put the vote of no confidence. Masaba put it. When Masaba put it, we're now going to support it here on Buzz News because I think everything started in Buzz News. This whole peace thing started at a Buzz News conference. I mean, we were angry. We were not even on, on speaking terms. We were calling each other names. Uh, we were we were calling each other not even things we think it's true just because Inga was speaking and 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 and, and, and at the business conference that's where it was it was the it was ignited the the peace so I'm saying we will support Masaba in his vote of no confidence against ANC and uh, and parties must not come with tricks because what parties usually do is they send just enough, they let the other councillors don't go, they, they allow the other councillors not to go to council in order for the motion not to pass, but enough for them to say we were there, we voted. This time, the PA is having nine councillors, we have eight councillors in the city of Joburg. All eight will be present, even with the wheel coming from a hospital bed, they will all be there to make sure that we remove them, because if we can do it in Joburg, now, here's the beauty of Johannesburg that people don't understand. The EFF has a deal with the ANC in Mukhale City. The EFF has a deal with the ANC in the city of Joburg. They have a deal with them in Ekurleni, in Rand West, where they already removed the DA, in Rand West District, municipality, last week. They have a deal with them in Fuleni. Now, if we remove the Joburg deal, which is the mothership in the city of Houteng, the biggest one, all those other deals are falling flat. Because how do you give a 14% party half of a metro and that party insults your president on a daily basis and you give them half of a metro. Now once we take Joburg away from them it's not about city of Joburg it's about it's about uh, it's about the whole how thing. Then Swanee will be safe because Swanee is not safe. Swanee is in grasping, uh, the Indians can tell grasp it. The grasping distance is Swani. But once the city of Joburg is gone, then you've taken away the bargaining chip. Because Joburg is at the moment the bargaining chip for EFF to be in power. And then the arrogance of the, of the ANC, I mean, I've saw something in the past month, two months, like, which is, I found unbelievable. You know, have you ever checked into a top hotel and they, when you get there, they've got people waiting for you with flowers, with the petals, 
and they got everything for you. And they're like, can we help you? They carry your luggage and you stay there and they give you the best service. The day when you check out, can they call you early in the morning? What time are you checking out, sir? We send somebody through a luggage, <laughs> they take switch off the Wi-Fi yeah. uh, thing, and that is how we've been treated by the ANC and the EFF. They start saying, we, yeah, EFF owes us absolutely nothing. But for the ANC, have treated us in a way that I would not think was consistent with what we've agreed on. But there's water on the bridge because we are nearly gone. We're taking the decision at 11 p.m. today, 11 a.m. today. By 11 p.m., uh, we would have given a statement, and I will send a statement to Buzz News of what we've decided today before 7 p.m. Because our meeting is until 5, 6 p.m. We will then draft the statement in the hour, and we will send it out. I want to support the Moonshot Pact. I think John is a very, very pragmatic leader. He has seen the sign of times. I think John is a naturally a nice guy. What I do not know is does he have the gravitas to lead something as delicate and as important? Because you know, people might say, "Well, the D is the biggest party in the in the group," so he called for it. It's his. I love the name Moonshot Pact because it's a covenant. It's a pact. Uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a pact. Uh, and and I know how important a pact is. Now, if John Cena is an and the DA supports Mashaba's motion, then for me that is uh, proof that this, then I will join the Moonshot Pact on the twenty fifth of next month. If they support the twenty fifth of May, I think twenty fifth or something. They're looking at that exact date. April, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the uh, I will be there. And the viewers can hold me accountable and play this tape. I will be there only if they support the motion of, of thing. But, Gaten, it looks like it's all moving in a direction. You've been through a lot of turbulence, all of the members of the Rainbow Coalition. But the, the man who's been at your side and steadfast and has taken a lot of punches as a, as a result of his support is Rob Herself. He's said, Gaten's a good guy. He's not a gangster. He's not a criminal. Treat him with respect and you he will be part of, I think he's always said, you're one of us. And I think what he means by that is that you believe in the free enterprise system. You believe in God. You believe in the the, the values that, that, uh, that many South Africans share as well. He, 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 you must be feeling, uh, well, he must be feeling very happy now that, that uh, as you say, you've been prepared to, to admit your mistakes and you're moving forward in a way that potentially, and I know there are going to be a lot of skeptics and cynics, they'll say, oh, but Gaten will move again in, in the next couple of months. But this could be uh, from, from an outside, from a neutral observer, this could actually have been the big step, which could see the country next year finding a, a different future. But what about Herself? What about what about your relationship with him? You turned him down when he wanted to fund you. Yes. Let me let me start with the funding part. You see, uh, particularly black people have a problem. Black people and coloured people have a problem. When you are friends with a billionaire and you are not white, they automatically assume you you getting money because they will ask money from their friends all the time. Some of them. Now those people they think that particularly in our communities. When you are friends with a guy like us, of, oh, he, that's his funder. They cannot fathom the fact that you can just be friends with a wealthy person. I've seen that. I've been accused of that. And I'm thinking, like, I've got my own money. I've got I've got my, my I mean, like, her service tried to buy one of my mines. Uh, it, it, that will instantly make me one of the uh, richest guys around town. And then I was like, let's talk about it. So for me, he's my friend first. His wife, I think, is one of the most marvelous people you'll meet. His children know me. We are friends. We are we are friends. I love, we are disagree. He embarrasses me a lot, and I'm sure I embarrass him a lot, because he shows from the hip, and he says the worst things sometimes concerning the ANC, even in ANC company. And He's my friend. Before politics, before anything, we are friends. We hang out together. We go on holiday together. We are just friends. That's number one. 
Number two, Herzog has tried for, I think, two years now to get me to join, to get me at this stage where I'm now. And I can tell you he's played a huge role in, 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 in my thinking. And I will not come here and say he didn't influence part of my thinking. He did, was a great part of my thinking. He's a guy that loves South Africa. He's a guy that 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 that, that has, has wanted to fund the PA. And I said no. I said no. I said he's not the only one. I we've had three billionaires wanting to fund the PA. I said the problem was you guys funding. Uh, I remember one guy. I won't mention his name, but I knew him to rock. And he said something so bizarre to me. He's one of the richest guys in South Africa. He, I met him through Rob. Rob introduced us. And then next moment he says to me, no, you can't go with ANC. I'm telling you now, you have to go. I'm like, hey, listen here. Who are you to tell me? And we are not speaking me and him now. Because I sent my message said, if you speak to your garden boy like this, you will not speak to me like that. And I called Rob. I said, stop introducing me to assholes. I don't. So imagine if a man like that has given us money. He's given us nothing. But he's telling me, you cannot go. Like, who do you tell that? And what I'm saying is we are very fortunate in the PA that uh, Kenny Kumene and myself, we've got long-standing businesses. And we can be self-sufficient to fund this party so that we don't have outside influences. And if people want to fund us for 2024 and help, you can buy pieces, you can do this, but don't try to influence that policy in an instructor will come and say to us, guys, like what Rob Brazov has done. He has, he has, listen, when I tell you that man doesn't give up. Rob will use, there was a time I said to him, Rob, can we stop talking politics? Because we are just, we are just, we are just beefing, you know, and, and then when it comes to the ANC, because I don't hate the ANC. He despised them. I don't hate them. I said to him, you can't make me hate the ANC. I don't hate the DA. Uh, there's guys in the in the other side, black friends of mine, that hates the DA, that wants me to despise the DA. I said no, I don't, I don't uh, despise the DA. I don't despise the ANC. But Rob Herzog has played a huge role, and he's a visionary. Let me tell you one thing: I, 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 I admire about him, except the fact that he speaks to. If you fly with Rob Herzog, he will go and greet everybody in the plane, and like, hey, how are you? Who are you? And, and you know the humility of that man, and 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 his wife, and and his kids, and how they treat people, and and I think South Africa, it will be a uh, great injustice of brain drain if people like robbers of are leaving the country. There's a lot of black professionals that want to leave. We need to fix South Africa, and and and, and this is the biggest step, and the viewers must watch what happens in the city of Joburg. And that will be the deciding factor, factor if anybody is serious about ushering in the new South Africa. The African National Congress has had 30 years to change our lives. There's nothing major. I, I was in, in, in Ethiopia recently and I saw the, how the country is growing. There's cranes everywhere. When last did you see cranes in South Africa building something of substance? We are struggling with things of candles, load shedding. And those those are those are problems that a country like us should not be struggling with. There's no innovation. Black kids are sitting at home at corners and getting involved in Yaupe. There's an unemployment figure. We've got foreigners running a havoc in our country through crossing and taking the uh, menial jobs uh, of people that 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 that, 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 that at the expense of South Africans. We have we have crime you know, to kill somebody in South Africa, you've got a 86% chance of getting away with murder. So if you kill somebody, that is that is odds that every gambling man will bet on. So it's easier to kill somebody than to go to the police station. There's a hitman all around. If you can kill somebody like AKA Ian in broad daylight, somebody, a mega superstar, you have all these things, and they are lying to South Africans when they say they arrested Tabo Best and Nandi, but they didn't arrest them. They didn't arrest them. They were arrested by the Tanzanian officials that says these are illegal immigrants. Now, you know how many double besters and Nandi pass from Zimbabwe, from uh, Nigeria, walking around in South Africa? 
there's a lot of them walking around. And if we start really going after illegal foreigners, we will find many double besters. Gaten, as you can see, I've, uh, the load shedding has just kicked in again. So one of those reasons, it's been such a pleasure talking with you again. Thank you for the updates. Uh, as always, uh, you, you, you speak direct and straight. And uh, for your rationale and your thinking on why you're going to be doing what you're doing, there's no doubt in anyone's mind who's been following the by-elections and been following politics in South Africa that this is edge of the seat stuff. This is it's it's a fascinating story that we're going forward until 2024 and that you're one of the major players. Thank you for your time this morning and we will be in touch as we go forward, no doubt. Um, appreciate the, once again, appreciate your time. 